two weeks later now it's time for part three of our painting the van videos and this would be buffing it out there are lots of contradictory advice on when to buff out acrylic enamel some say not to buff it out at all because it's too thin well we've got some orange peel and we've got some bug wings and dirt and grit all kinds of goodies so we're gonna buff it out uh, what do we learn from painting the van uh, see the top part there in the front that came out really well you know why because I painted that the night before at about 62 degrees and my reducer was a 60 to 70 degree reducer I painted the rest of the van the next day which was a surprisingly high 75 for the middle of March and I believe that's why I got a lot of orange peel because I had a very fast reducer and the paint really didn't have a chance to flow so believe it or not the front there came out pretty well except for the fish eyes due to the fact that I didn't have the water trap so we got a lot of sanding to do first thing we want to do is wash the van get all the dirt and grit off and then um, what I've done now is I've got uh, 1,000 grit sandpaper soaking in a bucket of water because that's what I'm going to start with today just get yourself a water bottle you can get these at the dollar store and the dollar store is fun to visit because uh, most of the people in there look like they're from the cast of Dawn of the Dead more brains! So, I'm gonna spray down. The area I'm gonna work on. And I'm gonna sand each area, and I can see when I'm sanding it, I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, when I get level with, with the, uh, the orange peel, basically becomes all one solid color. Now, I already did the runs. I did the runs with 400 grit. Your results may vary. You might be too squeamish to do that. I didn't feel myself doing it because it probably might even scare some of the paint people. But I got uh, the runs out, came out really well, and the sags. I used the 400 using this block, and I kind of like bent it over the runs. I did something like that, and it came out really well. So I'm going to go in one direction and do part of this van here. After each sanding, I go in and I dry it off again, and I can still see where it's not completely smooth here, still see it's kind of shiny and it's still got some uh, orange peel here. So I keep doing it and drying it, making sure I never go too deep or I'm gonna burn through the coat of paint. I found that the block works better from the back here on these curves. This is really messy. This would be great to do with all the stuff still taken off the van and the van still taped up. So if you can do that, so if you use a urethane enamel or something like that, that's probably what you want to do. Each time I sand it, I go in and spray it off again. I keep doing this. And wiping the whole thing down again. Looking for, and I let this dry because I am looking for more of the orange peel, which always appears once again as shiny spots when it dries. Still some wet spots and some spots there in the creases, and some parts I'm just not going to sand because I don't know if I can get in there with the buffer. So we'll find out about that later. But we got it pretty smooth. So I'm going to switch to the 2000 grit sandpaper now. I did the 2000 grit in a different direction so I knew where I was. Now I've got it watered down and letting it dry. I also hit some rough areas with some more 400. I'm um, using my finger. Real small areas and just too tough to get in there with a block or something. Okay, letting this dry. Next comes the buffing. I'll be using this buffer. Variable speed. And I will be using these, this Presto auto cutting cream. Actually, it says creme, so uh, make sure you pronounce that right when you're purchasing this. The auto parts counter. Okay, let's put a little uh, of the creme under the car. Now I'm going to hit this with the buffer at slow speed. Trying to just get the compound to fly all over the place. 
And then I'm gonna, I gotta keep moving the buffer at all times. I'm gonna try not to hit any ridges. Right there, with the dead on, because that'll burn right through real quick. So, uh, let's see what happens. Okay, we've done about done this about twice. Still got a little more to do, but it's starting to shine up and really shows the bodywork. Any imperfection in the paint will now be seen perfectly. I don't like to admit to my mistakes, but here's one of them. Using one of these pads to buff with. Now it's alright to buff with one of these things on a flat surface, but when you get into up in here and stuff, these just don't work. Plus, uh, the rubber disc behind here can get caught and it can just tear and burn if you bump into something. Ask me how I know. What I should have been using, especially on the Vanagon, is a curved buffer pad like this. Uh, this is a new one. I had one yesterday. It's still wet, so I had to get another one. And uh, these are fantastic. And you'll notice there's no sharp edges to do any burning. Now, you can still burn through, but this has been uh, much better. And also, you got to run the buffer really fast to get a good shine. So let's try this again. Alright, let's apply some more compound. Spray a little water. Start off on a slow speed. That shined up pretty good. I'd be lying to you if I told you I was using 1,000 grit on the whole van. I've been using 400 to start. The 1,000 just takes too long. And the uh, sandpaper don't scare me. The buffer scares me. The buffer should scare you too. Buffing's done. That took a long time. I'll tell you what I ended up using though, was this tougher buffer. Very long strands. This was a fantastic for the van again because it really gets deep to a lot of the curves we have there. All right, let's move on to polishing. I'll be using the same brand glaze, the Aurora hand glaze. That's our next step. And apply that. We're going to use this extremely expensive 3M foam pad, but this is what they recommend. So let's start off with that.
Isn't that pretty? I thought it came out pretty well. I'm happy with the results. That buffing took a long time. I've been at it since last Saturday, and today is Friday. It's a lot of work, but I'm um, doing it for myself. I'm also doing it for the fact that I go to a lot of VW campouts. There's going to be a lot of people coming over to inspect it and saying, you know, if you'd use a Langstrom 7-inch gangly sprayer on that thing, you know, with a 4.0 aperture setting, you probably would have got a lot less runs. So I'll be dealing with that too. So I made about every textbook mistake you can make. They say after you've painted about 10 vans, you'll get it right. I figured I could do it in, after f four or five more vans because I made some mistakes on this one. Uh, probably the biggest one, unless I mentioned biggest ones earlier, uh, some areas the paint was too thin. I think around the corners and the back, I was just kind of paranoid when I was painting, like, should I do that when I do the back or should I do that when I do the side? So first swipe of the sandpaper right through to the primer and some of the right on the tips in the back other than that and one on the a pillar here at the top other than that it looks good the runs came out really well there's no runs left to apologize for the unevenness of this film because this camera keeps acting up I dropped it when I made the replacing the front heater core video and this camera barely functions and I getting a lot of overexposure right now well that's about it I'm done with this van in terms of painting and polishing for now. A couple months I'll put some wax on it. Uh, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm happy with the results uh, for what I paid. So, see so how this holds up. I'm sure some of the rust will be back no matter what I do because this van lives outside and it's also a half daily driver. Alright, uh, now just remember, just because you saw it on the internet doesn't mean it's true.